Okay, so here's the code writing exercises for Nitro 5.2. And we're going to start off with batting average. And in this assignment, um, they're telling us what the baseball player class should store. So we have the baseball player .java class over here. There's the instance variables, but they do not have a constructor. So we need to make the constructor public. Baseball player. And we're going to need a couple of parameters. And they said they want to have three parameters to match the instance variables, but they should be ordered so that we take the name of the baseball player first, even though that's not the order of the instance variables up above, that that order is kind of immaterial. And then their hits, so int the hits, and then the at bats, so int the at bats and then we'll simply set our instance variables to equal the parameters that were passed to our constructor name equals the name so the constructor is done parameters in the right order. They already implemented the batting average method for us and the two string method for us. So, so far this should run without error. Um, we're creating a new baseball player named Babe Ruth. That's the variable name with a name Babe Ruth and the number of hits and the number of at bats. So all that's printing out correctly. And now we need a call to the print batting average method which is right over here and that method doesn't return the batting average it actually prints out the batting average so all we have to do here is our variable name babe ruth dot print batting average and then it should print out the same information as before but now his batting average. And just as a quick bit of uh, verification, there is a Wikipedia article on top batting averages all time. And if we look at this list of batting averages, we will see Babe Ruth in 10th place with a batting average, career batting average of 342, which is exactly what printed out here. So it looks like they did their homework on that. Okay, so I think that's doing all that we needed to do. And now we're going to be on to 5.2.6, which is the dog class. So they have a dog tester in which they've written nothing, and they've got a dog class in which they've given us the instance variables, but no constructor. So public dog that will take some arguments. And we need the dog to have a name. So we need the constructor to be given a string containing the name that we're going to give to the dog. We need the constructor to get an integer, which is going to be the age of the dog. And we need the constructor to be passed a double, which will be the weight of the dog. And then we will save those into the instance variables like this. Okay, take three parameters. The signature method should take the name, the age, and finally the weight. So that's all good. Then they want us to do another constructor. But this time, just take the name and the age, no weight. And you will assign a value, it says. You will assign a value for the weight of 0.0. .0. Remember, weight is supposed to be a double. So we've got two different constructors. Then come over to the dog tester class and create a couple of dogs. So dog one is a new dog 
with a name of Carol, following their example down here, with a weight of, uh, sorry, with an age of seven and a weight of 15.6. And then I'm gonna create another dog called Dog2. And this dog will have the name Clover. It will have an age of nine. And we're not gonna give it a weight. So when Java encounters these two creations of new instances of the dog class, um, Java, when it sees these three parameters, will automatically look for the constructor that requires three parameters. And when it encounters this that's passing two parameters, it'll look for the correct constructor that's expecting two parameters. So this creation of those two dog objects should run without error if we've done everything correctly. Okay, that's beautiful. And then we want to do a couple system.out.print line dog one. So that printing out dog one will use the to string method of the dog class. We do have a to string method over here that they already implemented for us. So this should print out exactly what we were wanting to print out here. Carol 15, 6, and 7. And Clover 0, 0.0 and 9. Okay, so that's it for that. The only other thing I wanted to mention on this particular little lesson is that we don't even have to have this line here in our second constructor that assigns a weight of 0, 0.0. If we don't assign a value to the weight variable, it will automatically be given the default value for a double, and the default value for a double is 0, 0.0. So even if we don't assign a value for weight here, watch this, when we run the code, it'll still run just fine and assign Clover a weight of 0, 0.0. So either way for that second constructor is fine. That's it for 5.2.6. Now moving on to 5.2.7. So this is student overload. They've already got the tester pretty much done. They're creating two students. Notice they're giving a first name and a last name and a grade and a school to the first student. But on the second student, they're giving a first name, last name, and a grade level only. So we need a couple constructors over here. Um, first name, last name, grade level, and school. So our first constructor, public student, will require um, all four parameters. So we're going to need a string, which is the first name of the student. We're going to need a string, which is the last name of the student. We're going to need an integer, which is the grade. And we're going to need a string, which is the school. And then we're just going to store all of those into the instance variables. Last name equals the last uh, grade level equals the grade and school equals the school. So that constructor works fine. For the other constructor, first name, last name, grade, and school. For the second constructor, we want to do all of that except we're not going to require a school. We're going to require a first name and a last name and a grade. And here's what they want us to do for school. Um, they want us to insert some type of an if statement so that we will check the grade that the student is in. And depending on the grade that the student is in, we will set the school variable to either high school or if there's a different value for the grade variable, then we'll set the school instance variable to middle school. And if neither one of those criteria has been met, then we'll set the school instance variable to elementary school. 
Okay, so I think what we want to say here is if the grade level is greater than or equal to 9, then that would cover grades 9 through 12, and then we would want to say that person's in high school. But if this condition is false, then that means the grade level is for sure less than 9. So if it's less than 9, then we're going to check if the grade level is greater than or equal to 6. If it's less than 9, but it's greater than or equal to 6, then we can say middle school. And if both of those fail, then it must be less than 6, the grade level. And if the grade level is less than 6, then we're going to say elementary school. So here's an example of using one of the instance variables they've given us in the as a parameter in the constructor and using that to set the value of another instance variable. In this case, we're using the grade uh, or grade level instance variable to initialize the value of the school variable. And then they want us to update the toString method so that it also says and goes to and then the name of their school. Okay, and there's a get first name. I don't think we have to worry about that. So now if we come over here and run the code, and let me go back over here and show the student tester code. So they created these two students. Alan Turing is in 11th grade. Grade 11 goes to Liberty High School. Ada Lovelace is in grade 5, but we didn't supply a school name. So our constructor just figured out that grade 5 would be elementary school. And if we had created Ada Lovelace in grade 7, then our constructor should automatically figure out that that's middle school. And if we said Ada Lovelace is in grade 9, then it should automatically figure out that that's high school. So we know that she's in high school, but we don't know the name of the high school. And even if they, if the user entered something stupid like grade 47, well, our code is going to say that's greater than or equal to 9, so that's high school. So I think that's all working the way it's supposed to work now. So that'll be it for 5.2.7. And now 5.2.8, which is the school club class. Okay, so now we've got a student class and a club class. So all of this code is the same here, creating those two students and printing them out. And they want us to use the student class that we completed in the previous exercise. So start by copying over your student class. So we're literally going to click down here. We're going to click on the student class. And everything that's inside of this class, we're just going to copy all of this without the beginning and ending uh, braces. I'm going to come over here to the 5.2.8 and go to the student class. And we're going to paste in here everything that we did there. Okay. So the get first name and the to string should already be part of that. So we copied that over. And so. This part of the code should work OK. So that's what we had working in the previous section. Now, we have to add a constructor for the school club class. So for the constructor, public school club, public school club and that constructor needs to be passed a couple parameters. We are going to need a leader as a student object, which I'll call the leader. And then we're going to need 
a string for the name of the club. So I'll call this the name. And then we're not going to make, we're not going to need a number of members because we're going to initialize that to be zero. So if these were all regular variables, we could do exactly the same thing that we've been doing in the other constructors, which is we could say leader equals the leader and name equals the name. So we're just setting the instance variables equal to the parameters that were given to our constructor. And for the number of members, they said initialize that to be zero. And then we want to test your code with the student tester class. The same exercise you'll need to add a statement to create a club and then print it out. So even though they said in the video that we should use the new keyword here, um, they haven't indicated anywhere here in the assignment that we should do that. So let's go back to our tester and see if we can create a new club with a leader and a name. So in the Java tester, let's do school club chess equals new school club with Alan as the leader and with a club name of chess club. And then we should be able to do system.out.println chess, which would use the two string method of the school club class. So let's run that and see what happens. Of course, it's still going to print out our two students that we created. And let me also somewhere in here print out a blank line or two. Alan is the leader of the chess club club. Okay, so they're throwing in the word club, so maybe I don't need the word club in the name of my club. Alan is the leader of the chess club club. I think that's all we wanted to do there. Let's check the code and then we'll do one other thing. What they were describing in the video is that in this constructor here, instead of making this student object equal to this student object, they were suggesting creating a new student object. But I think the reason why we don't want to do it in this case is if the leader of the club is Alan, and Alan at some point moves from 11th grade to 12th grade, we want that to be reflected in here. So I think that this is okay the way it's written. So one more thing I almost forgot. In the school club class, um, where we are initializing the number of members to be zero, once again, if we don't give the num members any value, Java will give it the default value, um, which is zero for an int. So even if we don't assign it a value, the code will run just fine. The constructor and all that, sorry, the code will run just fine, no problem. So I just wanted to interject that one last point before we finish, okay? This is fine here, and I think we're done with Nitro 5.2. Woohoo!